Hello, Mrs H here. Osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a higher water concentration to a low water concentration through a partially permeable membrane. Let's look at this partially permeable membrane. You can see that the blue water molecules are small enough to move through the gaps. So this membrane is permeable or allows water molecules to move through. The red circles represent a solute, something that's been dissolved in the water. So let's pretend this is glucose. You can see that glucose is too big to pass through the partially permeable membrane. If we look back at the definition of osmosis, so we are just focusing on the movement of water molecules, then we know the water molecules will move in this direction from left to right. One more thing before we move on. Don't forget to write that water molecules move from a high water concentration to a low water concentration. You must emphasize the water. If you look here, we have glucose concentration too. So if you leave out the word water concentration, people don't know if you're talking about the glucose concentration or the water concentration. The right hand side is pure water, so has the higher water concentration. So the water molecules will move from right to left. Which direction will the water molecules move? Don't count the blue circles to work it out. On the right hand side, there are more glucose molecules dissolved in the water compared to the left of the partially permeable membrane. The higher the glucose concentration, the lower the water concentration is going to be. The lower the glucose concentration, the higher the water concentration will be. And as osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a high water concentration to a low water concentration through a partially permeable membrane, then the water molecules will move from left to right. Both sides have the same glucose concentration. This also means that the water concentration on both sides of the partially permeable membrane are also the same. Although the water molecules may pass back and forth across the membrane, there is no overall movement of water molecules. If the water concentrations are the same either side of a membrane, there will be no osmosis. Here are two cells with their partially permeable membranes. Which way will the water molecules move? You were just given the glucose concentrations. So to make it easier, if 20% of that solution is glucose, then 80% is water. In a 10% glucose concentration, there will be 90% of a water concentration. Now you can use the definition, water molecules move from a higher water concentration to a low water concentration through a partially permeable membrane. So osmosis will occur in this direction. Let's look at another scenario. Sometimes Visking tubing is used in experiments because it is partially permeable. So you can get different kinds of questions with this Visking tubing stuff. Some Visking tubing contains concentrated glucose solution and it's placed in pure water. Which way will the water molecules move? What will happen to the level of liquid in the tube? Well, there is a higher water concentration outside, so water molecules will move into the tubing and the level of liquid in the tubing will increase. So we've got a, another little question here. Some students set up this experiment to investigate osmosis. They filled two pieces of visking tubing with different liquids and left them both in a beaker of 5% sucrose solution for an hour. What happens to each tube? We know this is an osmosis question and we have to refer to the water concentrations. So distilled water is 100% water. 5% sucrose solution will have a 95% water concentration. 20% sucrose solution means there'll be an 80% water concentration. So which way will the water molecules move and what will happen to the tubes? Let's look at tube one first. Tube one contains an 80% water concentration and is sitting in a 95% water concentration. Is there a higher water concentration inside or outside of the tubing? 
yet it's outside. So water molecules will move from a high water concentration outside the tube to a lower water concentration inside the tubing through a partially permeable membrane and the tube will get bigger, it will increase in volume and mass. Tube 2 contains 100% water concentration sitting in a 95% water concentration. So water will move from a high water concentration inside the tube to a lower water concentration outside the tube through a partially permeable membrane. The tube will decrease in volume and mass. Notice that each time I answer the questions, I repeat the whole definition each time because the examiners like you to say all the key parts of the definition. So I know it sounds very repetitive, but the more you repeat it, the more you remember it and you want to get all the marks you can get. How does water concentration affect plant cells, actual real plant cells? In a plant cell, water is contained in the cytoplasm and the vacuole, and there'll be solutes inside the cell, so the water concentration will be varied. If more water was to enter the cell, it actually wouldn't burst because of the cell wall. So a cell with plenty of water will be firm and turgid, and that actually helps to keep the plant upright. And of course, water is needed for lots of chemical reactions, including photosynthesis. If a plant cell loses too much water, then the vacuole becomes small and the cell membrane actually shrinks away from the cell wall. And that makes the plant cell quite flaccid. And this will cause a plant to wilt. And if that plant doesn't get water soon, it could die. And how does water concentration affect animal cells? Ideally, the water concentration inside and outside of the cells should be equal then the cells can maintain their shape and therefore their function. If the surroundings of the cell has a water concentration that is too high, then water will move into the cells by osmosis. The cells will burst because there's no cell wall to protect them. If the cells are surrounded by a very low water concentration, then the cells will shrink and they won't be able to function properly. So it is essential the water concentration is balanced in our bodies and we will learn about this balancing when we do homeostasis and the kidney. Hopefully this step through approach has helped you to understand the basics of osmosis. Now you need to give some exam questions a go. So definitely have a look at the exam question video. Please like and subscribe to keep up with new content.